and have a, an informal chat, enjoyable chat. The idea is not to have a, a formal conference, uh, not to throw you with masses of information, but make you enjoy coffee uh, better. So that's my objective. I'm going to give you a few insights about what coffee has been through history, um, what coffee is today in the marketplace, what are the main uh, prospects for the industry, what are the challenges, and uh, what makes coffee a unique uh, food product. So let's begin with this map that you, you are uh, watching. Um, let's start explaining uh, who produces coffee, who consumes coffee, and what uh, makes coffee uh, such a desirable drink, such a popular drink. So let's begin with production. So where pro uh, coffee production uh, takes, takes place? So between uh, the Ecuador and the tropics, most of the coffee production uh, takes place. So if you are in the equator, you need to go up in the mountains to have proper climate for Arabica production. So for instance, Colombia, Uganda, it is Colombia, it is Uganda, it is Indonesia. These are countries uh, located by the equator. So in order to have good quality Arabica coffee, you need to go up in the mountains. Um, in Colombia, between 1,000 and 500 meters sea level and above, beyond 2,000. That's where you can find good quality coffee, because in the equator you have uh, sunlight exposure uh, getting directly heating uh, planet Earth. So you need to go up to find fresh, cold nights that are suitable for very sweet, high quality coffee. Um, the same goes for um, Uganda, the same goes for Indonesia. But as you move to northern uh, 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 latitudes, let's say my country, Mexico, you move 22, 24 degrees north, and you only need around 900, 800 meters above sea level to find the same climate. And this has to do with the inclination of, of sun rays getting to, to planet Earth. So they, 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 they touch the planet in an angle. So there is uh, less heat, less sunlight at these altitudes. So you get colder nights. So good quality Arabica coffee, you find it up to um, Mexico in the north, uh, Sudan, Ethiopia, Yemen, India, um, Laos, Vietnam, and the Philippines. So the Philippines is among the more northest coffee producing areas. So you only need moderate altitudes to find high quality coffees, let's say 900, 800, and a little bit above. The problem in these areas, north or south, is frost because nights are very cold. So you cannot you cannot go too high because you, you get hail and you get frost. So there you have the southern the southernmost pro, uh, producing coffee producing areas are Bolivia, Peru, Brazil, in Africa, Angola, Zimbabwe. Um, and um, in Southeast Asia, you find a little bit of coffee in Northwestern Australia, but very, very little, up in the Guinea and the Southern Indonesian Islands. So you have coffee almost everywhere in this stripe. Um, the world produces around 150 million bags of 60 kilograms of 
uh, dry cough each bag. So 150 million, more or less. Every year there is uh, somehow variation. And the coffee uh, production tends to grow slowly at a rate of 2 to 3 percent, which is a healthy rate. But there are estimates that uh, we are going to have deficits in the near future. Because population is growing faster, and some new uh, emerging economies are getting to consume more and more coffee, like China, like Southeast Asian countries. So, uh, for instance, Indonesia is increasing consumption, and production is stagnant, it's not increasing. China uh, is increasing consumption, starting with a very low base, but increasing by, by more than 20%. So whatever happens in China is going to affect the world, um, the, the, the international coffee market. Um, so that's uh, who produces coffee. So who consumes coffee? The main consumers used to be um, cold climate countries, developed countries. There is a strong correlation between coffee consumption and income. The better uh, an economy performs, um, the bigger the middle classes and the higher the coffee consumption. That's what we learn from economists. So what we are seeing in the emerging economies like India, China, Brazil, uh, to some extent Colombia, Mexico, uh, Indonesia, is that middle classes are growing and domestic consumption is also increasing. So it's no longer true that only developed countries in Europe or the United States or Japan are consuming the most part of, of, of coffee. So now also coffee producing countries are consuming quite a lot of coffee. So this is a new trend. You, you can see it in the Philippines. In the Philippines coffee consumption is increasing in the, in the main cities. Middle classes are growing, the economy is, is performing more or less okay. So as long as the, the economy is performing okay in the Philippines, you are going to see an increase in the middle classes, in the urban li livelihoods. And coffee is very important in new urban uh, labor uh, schedules, livelihoods. So who is consuming the most coffee in the world? So the, the, the highest rate consuming countries are Scandinavian countries. Very cold climate. They consume between nine to up to up to fourteen kilograms per person a year. So how much is this coffee? Well, have a just a, a wild guess. One kilogram of roast coffee make account for a hundred cups of coffee. So think about 10 kilograms, so that's a thousand cups of coffee. We have only three, 365 days, so that more or less, three cups a day. So this is, on average, the highest consuming countries in the world. Then you have the United States with around eight kilograms, you have Brazil, which is around six kilograms per person a year. But Brazil is a very big country and it's going to become the main coffee consuming country. By now it's the first coffee producing country in the world, Brazil. But in a, perhaps in a few years, it's going to take over the United States as the main coffee consuming country. So Brazil is the first coffee producing country, but also is going to become the main consumer. That's very good. Otherwise, they are, they are going to overflow the market with, with coffee. Brazil is ahead of everybody else in terms of technologies, in terms of research. Uh, the economy has been performing very well until, until uh, this, this uh, past two years. It's not performing very well. But Brazil used to perform very well. They took out of poverty millions of coffee producers, as uh, Vietnam did as well. Vietnam was the most successful coffee producing country. 
um, in less than 10 years, they went from a couple of hundred thousand bags of production to more than 27 million bags of coffee. Vietnam is the second world coffee producing. Uh, they mainly produce Robusta. Brazil produces both, Arabica and Robusta. So another uh, important consuming countries is um, Japan, South Korea, in terms of per capita, they are also very high, very important markets for you in this region. Australia is also becoming a very important uh, consuming country, New Zealand. So all the uh, main coffee, uh, I mean, all the main economies, developed economies, are important consumers. Um, but the new trend is that not only developed countries are consuming coffee, but emerging economies as well. So this is a very important trend, because before, our countries, our producing countries, Indonesia, Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, um, we used to export 80%, 85%, up to 90% of all coffee, and we, we only consume a little bit and the worst quality, trash. So we burn those coffees, so to get rid of defects, add a lot of milk, sugar, and we drank the worst coffee. Now that's changing. You can see now that you're drinking clean, nice coffee in the Philippines. So this is a new trend. Perhaps 10 years ago, you would be one of those drinking trash with a lot of milk and sugar. Now, nice coffee is available in our countries, and we are not only exporting, but consuming high quality rates of coffee. 